and Spencer, and Bethel Spencer born Bannister, February 6, 1882, July 27, 1975, was an American poet, teacher, civil rights activist, librarian, and gardener. While a librarian at the all-black Dunbar High School, a position she held for 20 years, she supplemented the original three books by bringing others from her own collection at home. Though she lived outside New York City, the recognized center of the Harlem Renaissance, also known as the New Negro Movement, she was an important member of this group of intellectuals. She met Edward Spencer while attending Virginia Seminary in Lynchburg, Virginia. Following their marriage in 1901, the couple moved into a house he built at 1313 Pierce Street, where they raised a family and lived for the remainder of their lives. Spencer holds an important place as a widely anthologized poet and was the first Virginian and one of three African-American women included in the highly influential Norton Anthology of Modern Poetry 1973. As a civil rights activist for equality and educational opportunities, in association with James Weldon Johnson, the branch became fully active with 96 members as of July 1918. The Spencer's home became an important center and intellectual salon for guests and dignitaries such as Langston Hughes, Marian Anderson, George Washington Carver, Thurgood Marshall, Martin Luther King Jr., James Weldon Johnson, and W. E. B. Du Bois. And Spencer also loved her garden and a cottage, Edincrawl, which her husband Edward built for her as a writing studio in the garden behind their home. The name Edincrawl combines Edward and an and crawl, the Afrikaans word for enclosure or corral. Life. Early life. Annie Bethel Bannister was born in Henry County, Virginia, to Joel Cephas Bannister and Sarah Louise Scales, African Americans who were determined to make a better life for their daughter. Her parents worked on a plantation after their marriage. Both parents, although her father Joel was born a slave in 1862, were part of the first generation of African Americans whose childhood followed the demise of slavery. As an only child, she was the center of her parents' affections. This devotion led to their separation over differences in ideas about child rearing. After the separation, Annie Bannister was then known as Annie Scales, taking her mother's maiden name. Mother and daughter moved to West Virginia and settled in Bramwell, a town whose acceptance of African Americans and immigrants was unusual for the time. Annie lodged in the home of the Dixie family while her mother worked as a cook at a local inn. William T. Dixie, a proprietor of his own barber shop, his wife Willie Bell, and their five children were prominent members of the African American community. As a lodger in the Dixie household, Annie was without cares, chores, or schooling of any kind. Sarah was deeply devoted to her daughter, and she believed the local schools were unsuitable for her. Without the formal structure of education, Annie had an unusual amount of freedom for an African-American child in the late 19th-slash-early 20th century. It was this freedom of life without care in Bramwell that would lead to her development as a poet, it was there in the outhouse that Annie, as an illiterate child, would take the Sears and Roebuck catalog and seclude herself, turning the pages, imagining and dreaming herself as a reader. Her childhood in Bramwell was to prove foundational to her development as a poet and an intellectual. The solitude she found in the Dixie's outhouse was to resurface for her as an adult in Lynchburg, with the garden house her husband built for her, called Edincrawl, a name derived from the combination of their names, Edward and Anne, and the Afrikaans word for enclosure or corral, crawl. Although separated, Annie's parents, Joel and Sarah, continued contact concerning their daughter's well-being. When Joel learned 
That Annie was not in school, he sent Sarah an ultimatum that Annie must attend school or he would take her back to live with him. Although Sarah believed the local schools were unsuitable for Annie, she had learned of the Virginia Seminary at a church meeting. With Joel's ultimatum in mind, Annie was sent to Lynchburg to be enrolled in the Virginia University of Lynchburg, then known as Virginia Seminary, in 1893, when she was 11 years old. Despite her largely illiterate childhood, Annie excelled at the seminary, delivering the valedictory address at her graduation in 1899. Annie would return to Bramwell during breaks and over the summer. Having received a normal school education at the Virginia Seminary, Annie returned to Bramwell after graduation and taught school in Elkhorn and Maybury, West Virginia from 1899-1901. Later life. While at the Virginia Seminary, Annie met fellow student Charles Edward Spencer, whom she married on May 15, 1901, at the Dixie's home in Bramwell. In 1903, the Spencers moved permanently to Lynchburg and built a home at 1313 Pierce Street, where they raised three children together, two daughters, Bethel and Alroy, and a son, Chauncey Spencer. Chauncey was to continue his mother's legacy of activism, playing a prominent role in military service during World War Roman II. Chauncey's actions and determination led to the formation of the Tuskegee Airmen. Chauncey Spencer was to become a noted member of that group at a time when African-American pilots had been refused military service as pilots. Before and started her life as a writer, she worked at an all-black local high school known as the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. At the school, she worked as a librarian for more than 20 years from 1923 to 1945. The library consisted of a rather small collection of books, which resulted in Spencer bringing books from her own collection at home to add to the library. Literary life And Spencer's literary life began while she was a student at the Virginia Seminary where she wrote her first poem, The Skeptic, Now Lost. She continued to write poetry throughout her life, using any scrap of paper or garden catalog page that was handy to record her thoughts. Spencer's poems spoke to race, nature, and the harsh realities of the world that she lived in. Her work would go on to be widely anthologized. Spencer's career as a poet began in 1919, when she was planning to open a chapter of The Knock in Lynchburg and Spencer hosted James Weldon Johnson in her home as a traveling representative for the NOP. It was during this visit in 1919 that Johnson discovered Anne's poetry and working through H. L. Mencken. She was 40 years old at the time her first poem was published. The majority of Spencer's work was published during the 1920s, during the Harlem Renaissance. Her work was highly respected during her time, and through her poems, she was able to touch on topics of race and nature, as well as themes of feminism. For instance, critics interpret her poem White Things to be a comparison of the subjugation of the black race to the despoliation of nature. Her work was notably featured in Elaine Locke's famous anthology The New Negro, an interpretation which connected her to the lifeline of the Harlem Renaissance, despite the fact that she lived in Virginia, far from New York. In addition, her poems were included in the book of American Negro Poetry, which was edited by another figure of the Harlem Renaissance, James Weldon Johnson. During her lifetime, Spencer was able to publish over 30 poems. She earned herself a place in the esteemed Norton Anthology of American Poetry for her writing, making her the second African American to be featured in this work. After her death in 1975, much of her work was published in Time's Unfading Garden and Spencer's Life and Poetry. She was later featured in Shadowed Dreams, Women's Poetry of the Harlem Renaissance. In the later half of the 20th century, 
much of Spencer's lost work was found and published by other famous poets. Legacy. And Spencer died at the age of 93 on July 27, 1975, and is buried alongside her husband Edward, who died in 1964, in the family plot at Forest Hills Cemetery in Lynchburg. In 2016, the Library of Virginia and Dominion Power honored her as one of their strong men and women in Virginia history. The Lynchburg home in which Ann Spencer lived and worked is now a museum, the Ann Spencer House and Garden Museum. The Ann Spencer House and Garden Museum is dedicated to preserving her legacy and connection to the Harlem Renaissance. A celebrated gardener during her lifetime, Anne's garden was inextricably woven into her life and provided the inspiration for much of her poetry. A garden house, the one-room retreat, called Ed and Crawl, where Anne did much of her writing, is also part of the property. And Spencer's papers, related family papers, and books from her personal library reside at the Albert and Shirley Small Special Collections Library at the University of Virginia. Some of Anne Spencer's personal correspondence with James Weldon Johnson, specifically selected by her, are part of the James Weldon Johnson Memorial Collection at the Bainet Rare Books and Manuscripts Library at Yale University. Much of her poetry was deeply connected to her garden, and she used her garden and the plants she grew there symbolically in many of her poems, among them, Grapes Still Life. Among her most influential works was White Things, though it was not republished in her lifetime after its initial appearance in the crisis. Alas, its impact was such that Keith Clark, in Notable Black American Women, referred to it as the quintessential protest poem. Still poetically active up to her death in 1975, and Spencer wrote one of her most evocative poems, titled for that same year, 1975. In 2019, the United States Postal Service announced that Spencer would feature in a 2020 forever stamp honoring figures of the Harlem Renaissance. Others in the quartet include writer Elaine Locke, novelist Nella Larson, and historian Arturo Alfonso Scomberg.